Hey everybody, so astrophotography. Now if you go around online, you're probably going to get a bunch of responses, but the general consensus is that this is a really expensive hobby to get into. Uh, you're probably going to hear that you need to spend a thousand or thousands of dollars to get a really good, heavy, big working setup for you. But I'm going to show you all what I've managed to accomplish with my approximately five to six hundred dollar setup. This is my Celestron 130 SLT. It is a alt azimuth mounted Newtonian scope. Uh, I use that in combination with my Canon 450D, so this is a DSLR. Um, you do have to modify the mirror position in the telescope a little bit in order to make it compatible with the DSLR, but this is a really simple mod and basically everybody should be able to do it. Um, I've also modded my Canon DSLR. This was a bit more involved. Um, there's a really, really good guide out there, so I would recommend y'all check that out and see if it's something that you'd want to do. Uh, it really helps with imaging though. It helps you capture a uh, specific wavelength that's really close to IR that gets blocked. Um, so quick disclaimer, when I say astrophotography, I'm referring specifically to DSOs. So that's deep space objects like galaxies and nebula. Uh, if you're looking for planetary, there's gonna be way cheaper setups that are way better. Uh, if you're looking for lunar, probably the same thing. Uh, and if you're just looking to do just super wide field Milky Way stuff, you can basically just get away with the DSLR. Uh, if you want to, you can add something like a star tracker or a barn door tracker on top of that. Um, but this, uh, this is really specifically for DSOs. So with that said, let me show you all the kinds of images that I've gotten. All right, so I've been doing this for several months now, and these are some of the images that I've gotten. So bear in mind that these are all stacked exposures, so that means I've taken shorter exposures and combined them together into a longer aggregate exposure. So this was built from 20 second subs combined with dark and bias frames, which we'll talk about in another video, and put into this free software called Deep Sky Stacker, which added up all the data and produced something really similar to this. After that, you can take it to another software like Photoshop or a uh, free one called Raw Therapy if you want to. I normally do. Uh, and just change the contrast a little bit. I normally leave the colors alone other than bumping the saturation slightly. Uh, and you'll end up with something like this for an hour's exposure of the Triangulum Galaxy. Uh, with these weird edges around here, this is the result of something called field rotation. So when an object moves through the sky at night, it actually rotates slightly. This is due to the offset of the Earth's axis for rotation. And our alt azimuth mount is going to capture that. There are other mounts that compensate for it. They're called equatorial mounts, but going to an equatorial that's also go-to for tracking purposes and everything is uh, quite a bit more expensive. And also the reason why we're doing shorter exposures is because the, uh, the alt azimuth mount, at least the one that I use for my Celestron 130 SLT, kind of supports up to about 30 second exposures uh, just based on the quality of the mount for tracking purposes. But uh, assuming you have the space, it works pretty well. Like data space, it works pretty well. Uh, here is a 20 second sub of the Great Orion Nebula and Running Man Nebula. So this is one of those shorter exposures that I talked about. And you combine them together into something like this after two hours. So you can compensate for the field rotation yourself. Uh, by, by that I mean literally rotating your camera on the telescope just a little bit over time. And you can get something that ends up pretty rectangular, so I did a good job essentially on this one. This is one of my favorite images uh, for that. But it is something that you can overcome on your own if you want to. Uh, otherwise, you may just want to consider buying an equatorial mount or uh, doing something of the like for that. Uh, but that's also only true for really big objects that you're imaging. If you're imaging something really small, then it doesn't necessarily matter. You can let it rotate, just have it in the center, and then just crop it wherever you need to. So just something to think about. So we've got things like the Whirlpool galaxies. This was one of the ones that was really small that I cropped. Uh, Southern Pinwheel Galaxy, Monkey's Head Nebula, uh, Lagoon Nebula recently, um, 
the Flame and Horse Head Nebula, which I've taken a bunch of this. Uh, real quick, so this uh, this one right here is before I got the mod on my camera. So you'll notice that the Horse Head Nebula is a bit more faint, and um, there's there's some stuff here that you can kind of see, but it's kind of difficult. There's not a huge amount of contrast in this image, whereas this one was after I got the mod. Uh, disregard the color, I was using a different filter for city light suppression, but uh, you can see the detail in here way better because the Flame Nebula and Horsehead Nebula have a lot of hydrogen alpha emissions, and that's primarily what you do the mod for. But uh, you can image without it, it's just you're more limited on some of the targets that you can choose and on the ones that kind of have a mix it would be better it would be a better use of your time to have the mod on there but it's it's not necessary uh, one of the things that's really great to image if you don't have the mod for example is the Pleiades which is a reflection nebula it's really really blue uh, so hydrogen alpha emission is red so there's a ton of stuff that you'll see up in the sky that is just red, effectively. Uh, like the Tadpole Nebula, for example. Tadpole's right there. Eye, eye, tail. Um, Rosette Nebula, for example. The Cone Nebula, it's right there. But uh, these are some of the things that I've gotten. I am out in relatively good darkness whenever I'm taking a bunch of these when you do have to image from a city or something that's pretty light polluted you may want to filter on with it and you can get good images with that filter though I haven't found out perfectly how to replicate the colors for everything whenever I do that the colors always seem a little bit off uh, but just things to consider so these are some of the images that I've taken and if you're interested in going down a similar route that I am, stay tuned for more videos for this stuff.